Charge your engines for a Sony Computer Entertainment America production. Fasten your seatbelts for another Naughty Dog creation. Welcome to the Adventure Arena. You can travel around this area and practice your driving skills. The dots and stars on the map represent warp pads, which lead to races. When they flash, it signifies they are open to play. To access a racetrack, drive onto a warp pad that has an active warp vortex, and it will take you to the track start line. Finish a track in first place to win a trophy. As you collect more trophies, other tracks will turn on and open to you. Good luck, and drive fast. Don't you just love spin-offs? Well, here's the last game that Naughty Dog made for the Crash series. They ended it with a spin-off. You guys are probably like, the frick when this game came out? You guys are probably just... What the heck, a racing game? Well, it's not necessarily a bad idea. They made three platformers. Why go out of the genre for one game? Here's the thing. They had a license to make three Crash games, but Universal Interactive let them make one more Crash game. After that, they had to get rid of the series. Well, they didn't get rid of it. They just couldn't make any more games. Naughty Dog didn't own the series. Universal Interactive Studios owned it and published all three of the other games including this one and some future ps2 games before activision got a hold of it don't know who, what idiot gave it to them but anyways um crash team racing is the game naughty dog wanted to make just to show their fans how a racing game or a game out of the platformer genre would be for the crash series this was the first racing game for the playstation 1 that actually can compete with the Mario games, at least under my knowledge. Many Mario fans were insulting Crash Bandicoot and vice versa. This game back in the day was competing with Mario Kart. I don't see why you have to compete. I don't see why there can't just be two separate games to enjoy unless if you like both of them. Well, here's the thing. Crash Team Racing is the only Crash game that happens to be developed by Naughty Dog that goes kind of out of their style because they never made a racing game before this but this crash game is very fun I mean it's the, the problem I have is that crash nitro Kart literally ripped off every single thing this game had except for the story and some character designs if you guys like this game, you will like Nitro Kart, unless if you think it feels generic. I like Nitro Kart better than this game because I didn't have any nostalgia for this game because 
I got this game as soon as it was on the PlayStation Store, which was in 2010. Back then, I was buying Crash games off the store. But this game, yeah, it has the analog stick feature for every console you play it on, so don't have any problem with it. I don't have any problem with it, you shouldn't either. But, yeah. Power sliding. Starting it up. Power slide boosting. Almost all the power-ups are in Crash Nitro Kart. In some way, shape, or form. Except Crash Nitro Kart had way more characters. But this game, the Naughty Dog feel to it makes it feel like it's really more creative. But... Nitro Kart is very fun, but all the Naughty Dog fanboys always say this game is better just because it's a Naughty Dog game, but they could do a lot better when they say it. it's better than just say it was made by Naughty Dog, but Naughty Dog did a great job. I don't understand why Universal wanted them to just stop making the games. I don't understand that. Naughty Dog were doing so great. Why was Universal being so douchebagical? Or whatever you want to call it. I mean, they did the same thing with Insomniac when it came to Spyro. But I'll do the Spyro games later. But hey. I, you guys may be thinking that I may stop the gaming memories for Crash at this game. Nope, sorry, I got way more games to do in the Crash series. Except I'm not doing the Game Boy games. Because I haven't played them. And I don't have any form of recording Game Boy games. Because I don't know if there is a component cable for Game Boy. But, well, I might do it sometime. Who knows? But, yeah, I'm going to do the Wrath of Cortex next. I, a lot of people say the Wrath of Cortex was when Crash started to get dull. But it was made by Traveler's Tales, and Traveler's Tales actually cared about Crash. You want proof? You better look at, um, I can't remember the website, but at some point when I make a video about this, I'll, exp I'll explain. Because the Traveler's Tales Oxford Studio cared about Crash and they wanted to bring it back. Well, Vivendi Universal had to shut them down, this whole entire studio, and they gave it to Radical Entertainment to develop. But I, I can't go into that. This is Crash Team Racing we're speaking of, right? Well, the power sliding is very addictive. You have to do this almost all the time to boost up when you don't have the boosting power-ups or have the boosting pads. And you're going to have to go as fast as possible. There's only up to eight players to race, which is a standard for kart racing games like this. I mean, it isn't for Ratchet and Clank going commandos, hover bike racing, but that could be explained some other time. Here in Crash Team Racing, there's a bunch of difficulty switching going on in Adventure Mode. In Adventure Mode is the Story Mode, of course. At the beginning, it starts to get easy, but it gets hard as you progress. I mean, it did the same thing in Nitro Kart. Except, the thing about it is, when you explore the levels in Team Racing, it's way more free. You aren't stuck at any place. I mean. In Nitro Kart, to go to the next area, you're going to have to go through these teleportation pads. In Team Racing, you're going to be riding through it. It's going to be feel. It's going to feel more free. You're always going to be on a kart in this game. It's not like Tag Team Racing for those of you who have only played Tag Team Racing. And this game is nowhere near like Tag Team Racing. Just letting you know, nowhere near it. It's just the racing that's similar. But anyways. Yeah, there's more than just adventure mode. There's versus modes. There's, I think there's battle arena modes like there was in um, Crash Nitro Kart where you can go against, you know, in split screen. Use those power ups to go against your friends. It's, it's actually kind of fun. But I don't know how fun it is in this game. I haven't played it. But if you have a PlayStation 1 or a PlayStation 2, you're not going to enjoy the fact that you have to have a multi-tap, which kind of made the rating in this game go down. Because this game marketed the multi-tap back in the day in 1999, which was the year this game was released. I recommend you play this on the PS3 so you don't need a multi-tap. And if you play it on the PSP, there's literally no way you can connect to each other. I mean, believe me, I tried that already. I mean, there's no ad hoc on PS1 Classics. I'm pretty sure there's no way. I mean, you have to do some type of hacking for that to work. Or something like that. I mean, you can't even connect to the PS3. I mean, the PSP, 
when you're playing PS1 Classics, <laughs> there is no multiplayer. I'm pretty sure there isn't any at all, but... The music in this game is very awesome. It, it fits with the feeling of the game. It goes pretty well with it. I mean, there's literally nothing wrong with the music. It goes perfectly fine with the gameplay itself. It feels nice and original. It feels like a Naughty Dog game. It feels great. But, yeah. There's not. There's only like eight characters you can play as in adventure mode and period. Yeah, up to four players. That's great for a PlayStation 1 game. It's very great. I mean, not eight players. Four players, sorry. Four players is great. Given the fact that you'll have like four friends over and you just want to play a game. Well, three friends over, counting yourself. And you can just pick, go play this game instead of sitting down on your freaking butt playing Modern Warfare 3 or Black Ops 2. You can just sit down and play this game. Which isn't likely to this day. It's not really that likely. But it's very likely back in the day. It's very likely that that would have happened. And it's happened plenty of times. This game is a relaxing game. I mean, aside from the frustration that this game caused. I mean, I don't know if it's frustrating to you guys, but it's very frustrating to me. I hate bumping into other carts. I hate losing in second place. In fact, I've done it in one of my gameplay footages. I can't play this game. I suck balls at it. I mean, I'm good at Nitro Kart, but I never got used to this game. Because the graphics make it feel different. The graphics aren't bad, but here's the thing. They make it, the game feel different from Nitro Kart. Nitro Kart had an average PS2 look. Well, this game has a PS1 look. But it kind of confuses me because I'm so used to the graphics being more smoother and less confusing to me. I don't know. That's just, that's just me. I don't know if that is the same case for you guys. But I personally just cannot stand this game sometimes. Hope you guys love it. Because I don't love this game. It's just something I'll go back to. Once in a while. But yeah. I still recommend you play this on the PSP. On the go. But PS3 is not bad at all. To play this on. Analog stick works. Everything's fine. Yeah. Now it's time for you guys to enjoy the rest of the gameplay. I'll see you guys in my gaming memories for the Wrath of Cortex. Enjoy. To access this boss garage, you must come in first place in all four races of this area. You must have two boss keys to open this door. You can race a boss after beating all four tracks in an area. Beat the boss in a boss race and a key is your prize. This is the load save screen. There are five of these screens, one in each world section. When you want to load or save a game, go to one of these screens. To access it, drive up to the screen and stop. Then follow the directions. <laughs> 